I was diagnosed with uh, depression and post-traumatic stress disorder about 20 years ago. And then 14 years ago, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and bipolar one. We're very greedy, us mental people. <laughs> well, bipolar is the one that has been um, my greatest friend and my greatest enemy. I am bipolar one. My highs are usually followed by a very deep low and the bipolar depressions are very different from your normal depressions. For me, they are lower, they are deeper, they are darker than your normal ones. And the despair and the pain and the numbness and the loneliness is like uh, a double-edged sword just cutting straight through you. I mean, during those times, I yearned for escape from this world and the numbing pain was just like so like suffocating. I have too many scars, physically and emotionally. I have too many memories I want to erase. Like the fear and the pain on my husband's face when I wake up in emergency ward, uh, and I don't know why I'm there. But I am still here. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It is always something to clap about every day for me. Now, bipolar or mental illness, it like is so badly represented in the media and society. I mean, due to skewed facts, um, glorification, ignorance, discrimination. For example, I mean, bipolar highs are not just this beautiful um, frenzied energy that is unleashed. I mean, yes, it also kills effectively. And sure, I've been in a high and painted massive pieces of art at 3 a.m. outside in the depth of winter and it's freezing. But at the same time, I've also thought that I could fly. And my husband only grabs hold of the back of my jumper before I'm about to take off. Now, I fear the highs more than the lows, whatever, so deeply I fear it because there's this utter lack of control. It's sickening. And I am but only a passenger in my own body. It has cost me so much on every level and every aspect of my life. So you can see why I might have been in acute care for many years of my life. I mean, I am a danger to myself in those times and to others. I sound like a criminal. But I am good. I am still here and I have survived and I'm happy to be in this place. I mean, all the shame and the guilt and the hate that I had for myself, I learned can only be forwarded and fostered by me if I choose. Mental illness, it just won't disappear. So many times I've thought, if I just wait, it just might go. Acceptance has been my reframe. I accept this is the path I have to tread. I accept that I am bipolar. I accept that, hey, I might be unwell again. And if I accept, I also respect myself, my mental illness and what comes with it. And I will treat it well. Because I realise there is something of like, you can treat your mental illness well. I have the freedom to make that choice. And, you know, I'm blessed with a great team. I have a great psych, I have a psychologist, I have a GP, I have like a this and a that, and I have my husband, I have my friends, I have my family, I have my faith. The thing is, during the sickest times, I realise what I lose is hope. When I have no hope, everything just goes. Of course I want to die. Of course I want to leave this world. But i got to keep that living hope. Because without hope, Bipolar rules me, and I don't want to be here. I don't want to be around. And so many times when I'm at my worst is when I don't have hope. But I got it now. And I know that, you know, this mess, chaos stuff has a purpose. It's got a reason. Or else why the hell would I go through that? But I know. That's why I'm standing here now telling you my story. It's a journey, not a rival a journey.